one quickly develops uh, higher qualities like steadiness, taste, attachment, and then he gets to bhava, transcendental emotion. So when one reaches this transcendental emotion state, then he reaches the stage that we're discussing in the second wave of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhya. Are we boring you? No. So uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, therefore, is very, very elevated. It's very, very advanced. Yeah. But if we don't talk about these things, how is anybody going to understand them? And especially, how is anybody going to understand where they are on the stages of development of devotional service? You see? We have to understand that until we reach the clearing stage where we are uh, devoid of the propensity to commit offenses and fall down and stuff like that. Uh, there's no point in pretending that we're in some kind of stage of transcendental emotion. You see? That's not going to fly. I mean, it, it might fool uh, people who are not very knowledgeable or experienced in devotional service, but you, you can't fool anyone who is actually advanced or experienced. They're uh, well aware of the qualifications for the stage of bhava. So when one reaches this stage, he develops the ability to taste rasa. So now let me read, now that I already explained all this, <laughs> I pretty much covered the, the subject of the whole rest of the chapter, but let me read it anyway. The word rasa, used in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, is understood by different persons differently, because the exact English equivalent is very difficult to find. But as we have seen our spiritual master translate this word rasa into mellow, we shall follow in his footsteps and also translate the word in that way. The particular loving mood or attitude relished in the exchange of love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called rasa or mellow. The different types of rasa when combined together help one to taste the mellow of devotional service in the highest degree of transcendental ecstasy. Such a position, although entirely transcendental to our experience, will be explained in this section as far as possible following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami. In other words, it can't be explained completely. Uh, just like if, uh, if I was giving a class, instead of on Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, if I was giving a class on jazz improvisation, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to leave some loose ends because I couldn't explain it completely. It's not a thing that it's not the type of thing that you can explain completely. Huh? Like if I was giving a class on, the, on how to play the blues or something like that, well, I'd say, well, here are the chord changes. One, four, one, you know, four, one, four, five, one. Now, you know, just, just riff on it. <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, but how? <laughs> but how, Mr. Natural? <laughs> well, you just have to try it, and then you're going to make a million mistakes. Um, so that's why we have devotional service in practice and devotional service in transcendental love. The beginning stage is practice, just like a musician practices. He makes all of the mistakes in the stage of practice. But once he becomes proficient, then he can actually perform at a professional level. So the devotee in the beginning makes all kinds of mistakes. Huh? It's natural. That's why you need a spiritual master. You can't learn this independently. It's like an apprenticeship. It's like, you know, you, you can't learn to play a, a musical instrument at a professional level and I'm not talking about popular music here. I'm talking about real professional music. You can't learn that by practicing independently. You have to take lessons from a master. 
somebody who's already there. Uh, they can show you all the tricks, you know. Uh, similarly, to reach this stage of devotional ecstasy, you have to follow in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami and actually try it, actually relish it. Uh, and there's no question of even beginning this process until you at least reach the Anartha Nivriti. So if a person is, is seen to have attachments to uh, fame and um, the opulences of devotional service and things like this, then we can understand that they're still in the neophyte stage. Even though they may have some big, big position in some, in some religious organization or something like that, uh, still uh, the fact that they have this attachment means that they haven't really gotten beyond the idea that they are this body. Uh, they're still thinking, oh yeah, I'm, I'm the you know, big muckamuck in the so-and-so church or temple or whatever. And, uh, you know, they have to get past that before they can really get into this. Uh, so generally speaking, we find that the devotees who are relishing rasa and these advanced stages of devotional service are not found in these temples and these other orthodox kind of religious organizations. They're usually found outside practicing independently because they find by experience that they cannot practice these uh, more advanced stages of devotional service within the temple. The, the, the devotees keep stopping them. <laughs> so, you can't do that. You can't think that. You can't feel that. Hey, man, come on, you know, be like us. All offensive and stuff. Yeah. No, we don't want to be like that. We're tired of being that, like that. Uh, because that's just the same old material game uh, just played out in the context of religion. Uh, so we don't want this kind of spiritual materialism. We want to get past that and get to the real thing. So what is the real thing? Well, Prabhupada says, without relishing some sort of mellow or loving mood in one's activities, no one can continue to perform such activities. For example, in family life. Uh, family life is so hard. You know, you have to work so hard to maintain the family and taking care of children, you know, it's like a 20-year commitment to bring up a child. It's a huge piece of work. How does anybody do it? Well, they're relishing some taste. Uh, they have some relationship, and they're enjoying that relationship, or at least in material sense, they're enjoying the idea of that relationship. And that's what keeps them going. That's what keeps them motivated. Uh, you ask anybody who's in family life, what's the most important thing to you? They'll say, my family. Because that's what keeps them going. That's what keeps them juiced up. Uh, unfortunately, those tastes only lead, again, only to suffering. But the transcendental tastes lead to greater and greater existential ecstasy. Uh, that's what Srila Rupa Goswami is getting at here. Similarly, in the transcendental life of Krishna consciousness and devotional service, there must be some mellow or specific taste from the service. It's not just a general thing. You know, I see some devotees, they say, yeah, I'm a devotee, Hare Krishna, you know. <laughs> well, who are you a devotee of exactly? Well, you know, Krishna and Rama and Nishringa and Vamana, and I'm really, you know, I really like Lord Shiva, and Brahma's pretty cool too, you know, and then there's all these different forms, like the, the 24, 32 Vishnu forms with all the different... But paraphernalia, and then there's Ananta Shesha, and there's Garbhadakshai Vishnu, and there's all these, you know, all these different, I'm into all of them, Narayan and everybody. No. no. Who specifically do you get your taste from? But they can't tell you. They're like into it all. Right? But this is a, a symptom of uh, the uh, mood of neutrality. Well, it's, it, you know, it's written in the scriptures that so-and-so is an expansion of, of Godhead. So, oh, I better worship him, you know. 
the gopis were so into Krishna that one time Krishna decided to hide. He was playing a game with the gopis, you know. They were, they were looking for him in the forest. So he decided to hide by assuming his forearm Vishnu form. So when the gopis came across Krishna in his forearm form, he said, oh, Lord Vishnu, namaste, namaste. Can you help us find Krishna? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're like not very interested in Lord Vishnu. You know, they want Krishna. They want to serve Krishna. That's their taste. And they're not interested in any other taste. Of course, they don't disrespect other forms of Godhead, but at the same time they don't really get into the, their service either. Anyway, generally this mellow is experienced by chanting, 